welcome to Her Market TV. I'm your host today, Shukri Gutier. Uh, in another episode, we're talking about uh, Election Watch, and uh, we are coming up with the, um, the municipal elections are approaching us on October 22nd. I want to encourage you to vote. I don't care who you vote for, but exercise your civic duty right is a right that's given to you. Go out and vote and hopefully we make a change for the better. Absolutely. Today we have our lovely guest, Muhammad Ali, Ali Muhammad Ali, running for Ward 1 school trustee, and he's not running for the first time. Absolutely. Ali, welcome to Hormarket TV. Uh, Shukri, thank you very much, and you and the Hormarket TV staff. I'm glad to be here and to uh, discuss the uh, upcoming uh, local government election or the city elections that will be taking place on October 22nd. So it's, it's an honor to be here with you yeah. and to talk about that subject. Uh, yeah, thank you, I appreciate your time. We want to give our viewers, basically, we want well-informed voters. Absolutely. For people when they're going out there to know their candidates yep. and to ask them any questions. We have a couple of questions for you, but I want to know what inspired you to run for the first time and talk about the previous elections and how they went down. You already ran for school trustee Absolutely. previously. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. um, Shukri, as you mentioned, that I, I ran for a by-election when somebody vacated the seat. Um, to fill that in uh, 2016. Uh, what actually inspired me, for me, it was a natural. Um, I was uh, basically um, supporting my children to the school, whether that means selling bake sales, going with them field trips, organizing basketball courts, helping out the teachers, translating for parents who do English, not necessarily for their first language, um, sometimes mediating between understanding between parents and kids. So what happened is that on 2016, when the, uh, I was also representing um, Ward 1 in Tobika North for parents, mm -hmm. um, usually we have uh, an, an office called the PIAC, or PIAC. Parent Involvement Advisory Committee. Mm -hmm. um, so for me to get involved with the, the, with the, the uh, or seek trustee position, it was very natural. It was vacated by the trustee who was there, mm -hmm. and I was a parent rep. And it was very natural. Uh, so, and what actually motivates me the most is also is giving back uh, yeah. to the community. Absolutely. Talk about the work that you have been doing. You're already part of the parent council in PIAC, yeah. representing Ward One. Yes. Yep. Yep. Um, so you have been involved with the TDSB. You know the school system. Absolutely. Um, I think there are gaps, and also there are issues that the marginalized community. Yep people in our community do face within the school system. That's right. Um, talk about how you would tackle issues like that. Okay, so um, so the Toronto District School Board, or the TDSB as is known, it's one of the largest four boards in North America. Mm -hmm. So you would understand where the complexity will come down. It's a quarter million student, close to 40,000 staff, over uh, close to 500, 400 something plus schools. schools yeah. So the system is big. Mm -hmm. It's complex, mm -hmm. and it frustrates a lot of parents when you're navigating, trying to solve the problem. Yeah. So there is a lot. There is a process that the uh, the, the Toronto District School Board have. When, for example, when there is an issues, so parents sometimes feel voiceless in that because they get lost in the mm -hmm. system. They do not know. Um, a, a number of times where to start. Like let's say if you have an issue with a teacher, if you have an issue with a principal, yeah. if you have an issue with the school environment, if you have an issue with the, another parent. Why so, is it so politi politicized? I feel like um, because I remember I, I grew up in Saudi Arabia. Yeah. So in Saudi, like my parents sent me to school. Yeah. The teachers did their job. Yeah. They trusted the teachers. There was not a lot of politics, uh, and the parents did not have to come attend meetings and all that. Why is the system so different here? Like, why do yeah. the parents have to take up time, especially for working parents or single parent homes, to be involved in the school system? Yeah, and and and, and it's a very very fair question. But let me just put it in a, in a way: mm -hmm. um, education in general, yeah. it's not only in the classrooms. Actually, a lot of time we get educated outside the classrooms. Mm -hmm. We take the theory from the teacher, yeah. uh, from the educator, and then we apply it practice to a larger life to practice. Yeah. So yeah. classroom education is just one side. Mm -hmm. um, um, there is a more to it. And what is different is that, is the, uh, uh, for example, then we get into the issues. So um, a lot of times, unfortunately, in the city of Toronto or the Toronto District School Board, sometimes the um, classroom is huge. Teachers actually take more students in their classroom. Mm -hmm. um, distribution of classrooms, is there's a lot of budgeting involved. Yeah. X amount of, so there's something called, the, the, it's funded by per student, not necessarily per need. Mm -hmm. So you could be having a student with a lot of needs, yeah. 
but but only that on that yeah. so you would understand where the frustration comes out so the, basically that's the complexity also is the theory of uh, when I grew up and like you mm -hmm. um, we, teacher was everything um, teacher in, 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 the, in, the, in, the, in the current system is a little bit different. So teacher, it gives you the tools mm -hmm. um, and it gives the, builds the foundation. And it's you as a student or as a parent with the student or the community, navigate. how to navigate, yeah. how to work together to test it out. Um, so teachers do a lot of good work in the classrooms. And, and, and those could sometimes get lost because, you know, maybe the child didn't get enough hours and what yeah. have you. But that's also comes as funding, right? So a lot of frustration that's facing right now, the TDSB in Absolutely. particular, is the class size rooms. Yep. Um, it's too much for one teacher, I believe, for kindergarten to be kids. 30 yep. students. Yep. And you know, kinderg kindergarten, it could be a challenge. Yeah. Uh, so what are some ways or policies that you might want to implement if elected yeah. to tackle that? Uh, I think in the, grow in, in the lower level, just to be fair, in the yeah. lower level, there's a cap. Mm -hmm. There's a ministry gives directives that you cannot, I think, pass, I think it's around somewhere around 21, 22 students. Okay. But sometimes what happens is that if it there was pass. more than, what happens is there's about five students more. Yes. Doesn't matter which class you put. Mm -hmm. uh, that will go and evaluate. So, for example, the way I look at it, I'm actually very strong on one of the things that I think is a very important this election is the classroom size. I'm advocating for um, smaller classrooms where the teachers could have enough time with to each interact with yeah. each student, mm -hmm. and the student will have enough time to interact with the teachers. Yeah. And of course, that we can achieve that if we tackle the funding issue. Mm -hmm. So, the funding is per students. We want to look into the also what about the needs, yeah. and so I'm also advocating for needs-based um, educational funding, and, and that which is, will make a big difference. Mm -hmm. um, so the classroom size, smaller classrooms are tended to be known, and uh, you, those who attend private specialized, schools will tell is you. It, is it the specialized class size class within size. within the TDSB, like yeah. for students that with a special needs? Special so for example, needs, if okay. there's a special needs in there, you're going to be put a lot of resources because it will require more than that. Absolutely. But also within a regular uh, classroom, in where you say there's integration happens, what do you need is the, you want to give a small size classroom so the teacher can interact and the student can interact at the same time. Mm -hmm. And parents would have a time to um, in, in exchange with ideas with the teachers yeah. and the students and what have you. Okay. Um, so that it will allow our students to actually achieve more, mm -hmm. which is the maybe one of the ideas that we that we will get into it later on, which is the student achievement. Um, so more resources in the classroom is necessary, yeah. um, and and it's a must. We must provide it. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, you may find there's a lot of cuts in a lot of times. The, uh, the, the the boards usually are given a specific budget, and that's yeah. it. They have to find money like mm -hmm. anybody else. So as a trustee. Or if I win this election, let's just see. That's one of the looking at it is to ensure mm -hmm. our public school system has enough resources yeah. to produce to best everything. quality student education in our in, in, in our city. That would be ideal yeah, and lovely, is, but there's a lot of work. Idea. A lot of work. There's it's not easy. It's um, funding comes yeah. from the ministry, and, and Ontario government is in charge of that. Yeah. So, yeah. so the people will know. I think over ninety percent of the funding from school classrooms comes from the ministry. Um, Ali, what kind of feedback did you get from uh, people while you were campaigning? The one of the, yeah, absolutely. It's very interesting, actually. One of the things that you enjoy about campaigning is that you meet people with a different needs, different ideas, mm -hmm. who have a lot of actually good solutions. Yeah. Um, so things that I'm getting into at the door is actually a lot of times it's student achievement. Mm -hmm. uh, we, how come uh, Etobicoke North is not to have the most successful schools in the area? Yeah. Um, and they com people compare it to other wards. So that's yeah. one of the things I was hearing when I was mm -hmm. knocking the door. Student achievement. So basically, uh, graduation, the number of students graduating. Yeah. With excellence. With excellence, absolutely. And then uh, the number of students going into um, universities, universities and colleges and, yeah. and what have you. Yep, yeah, those are the. Yeah. That's what we call the achievement. Yeah. And and also parents are also very aware of. They look at the ranking schools. So they will. So Etobicoke North, there is a need, and I know some of the reasons. Yeah. Um, we didn't have an Etobicoke North very consistent trustee in position for a while. Mm -hmm. um, I think within the last eight years, at least we went through, mm -hmm. if not more than two trustees. Yeah. Um, so I'm trying to fill um, in that gap and say make sure that the trustee that uh, if I get in, there is stability and there is a focus on the com next coming four years and next coming eight years and next yeah. coming 12 years. And that will impact the <coughs> achievement in a, in a sense because mm -hmm. it will provide 
the leadership quality. We're missing a leadership quality. Yeah. A leadership that understands what the student wants, mm -hmm. the needs understand what are the needs of the parents and yeah. wants and expectations, yeah. and also the needs of educators in the classrooms. Yeah, so, so Ali, um, uh, some of the stuff and you know living in Etobicoke, uh, in particular, the Somali Canadian community and the students are, a lot of the students are born here. Absolutely. They're not immigrants. Majority are born. They're here, Canadian yes. born. So, yep. um, what are the, why are they facing issues? There's also like uh, some sort of gap in the system uh, where we see students that graduated from the TDSP school, they end up in um, the criminal system yep. um, and they fall out, especially with boys. Yeah. How can we fix that? I mean, it's, 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 a very, it's a very serious question and issues that we deal with it. But I just want to reassure you one thing. Mm -hmm. um, graduation rate of the student of Somali descent yeah. tremendously improved over the years. Mm -hmm. um, we have more students that are going to universities, colleges than ever before. Yes. Especially and girls. Especially girls. Yeah. And you will see also the boys are now stepping up to the, uh, to the, to the, like to the plate. Good. And because when you see your sister succeeding, yeah. she set the bar. Absolutely. And you have to yeah. walk into that. So yeah. my my coming into this, what I'm looking for more students to succeed in, 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 into that, and also, you know, go to higher education. Um, I like to somehow, um, if it's possible, to separate between the, what happens in the justice system and the school system. It, it, it's inter like I can see the interrelationship, but basically, is that for example, if the student is get frustrated in the classrooms, did not receive the support they need, yeah. did not succeed in the classrooms, mm -hmm. the option they have yeah. is to go outside with a lot of times. And you know when young boys and you know have a lot of times with their hand without any meaningful employment or meaningful uh, yeah. projects or meaningful work yeah. or what have you, that could that how would be the yeah. the. Uh, but I'm a very optimistic. Mm -hmm. um, I have four children that went through the, yes, uh, the school that, that are going to... through the schools, yeah. and 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 I'm also have a lot of neighbors from the same community that who are actually yeah. stepping up to the plate and succeeding. So I would so, like to look at the other side. Is the, the side is that. One of the mission is that to 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 lower or mm -hmm. or eliminate dropout rates, yeah. to increase tremendously tremendously the uh, the success of a graduation student, yeah. both and boys and girls. That's, that's and, and I'm actually happy to say when I see a lot of our girls succeeding, yeah. that's where the, the Somali community in line, in many many ways. It's not only here, but even in back home Somalia, mother was the bone of the community. Absolutely. So that always is going to be remaining. Yeah. The, 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 Somali that. women are Absolutely. resilient. Are resilient. Girls yeah. are like they have it in their DNA, even if they're born here. Absolutely. Um, I'm a diaspora kid. I'm born abroad. So yeah. So it's like we have it in our DNA. And I feel like sometimes it comes down to parenting. Absolutely. Not so much. I don't want to put a lot of pressure on the school system. Yep. Because uh, parenting has a lot to do with it. Yep. Mothers are very strict with their girls because they want them to exceed. That is a fact. And yeah. uh, you know what? For the boys, I hope they follow. And <laughs> I, I'm seeing more boys in yeah. in uh, graduate studies and yeah. enrolling in schools now more yeah. than more than before. Absolutely. And it's school okay. and home. It's, it's actually the, that's where the education starts before even students get Absolutely. to the classrooms. Absolutely. Um, so little things that we do allow the you know you know kids to wash dishes, take responsibility on yeah. a day. Mm -hmm. um, cleaning up the house, yeah. share, buy, going grocery with the mother and the father, yeah. and, and that will also, from the early generation, will like a and very big yeah. responsibility. Yeah. And, and, and education-wise is that the focusing on the lower grades, when the kids come to the kindergarten, yeah. and junior school level, the grade one and grade two and grade three, mm -hmm. that is the when the foundation is built. Yes. And that's where the focus would be. And that's what we talked about with the cap. To yeah. smaller sites in order to absolutely, set the, so the kids can get the, the foundations. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And so it does not become a playground. It's a school. It's you know? a school. Yeah. Because how do you expect a teacher to discipline and teach at the same time uh, yeah. for four-year-olds? Yeah, like absolutely. Four-year-old four older. older. Most they of have the time, a, you're like teaching them discipline, yeah. like line up and do this. Absolutely. And our teachers are very well um, in terms of um, resource, in terms of the knowledge. You know, yeah. there's of something. There's a lot of different theories. There's. Uh, uh, Teach uh, to teach to play, or the kids will play, so they can learn the math. Yeah. Whether that is repeating the words, or whether that is playing with the games, yeah. and there is another style, and a little, uh, by example or by manipulating the, uh, the you know the toys and what have you. So every stage is different. Absolutely. Uh, but I think I'm, I'm personally I'm mm -hmm. seeing my community and seeing our communities in Etobicoke North a lot. I'm very optimistic. Yeah. The future is going to be great. 
we have to work harder. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. There's a lot of work. Uh, Ali, I want to pick your mind about um, um, something that was implemented within the school system by the Toronto Police. Yeah. They had an officer yeah. within the school Resource system. Resource officer, yeah. Resource officer. So yeah. I truly believe that um, a police officer is not an educator. Mm -hmm. um, a principal is an educator. And um, a teacher is an educator. Yeah. So I, I don't believe that the police should be in the school system mm -hmm. at all. What do you what do you think? Well, the program is not there anymore. Yeah, the program is finished. The yeah, the program. The Toronto District School Board Trustees made a decision that that the program does not continue. Anymore. Where was your vote uh, on that? Uh, more than that. I, uh, yeah. Since I was not trustee, okay. I wasn't decision maker, so I was yeah. not involved. But, but as PIAC, a parent, did they consult yeah. you guys? In yeah, PIAC? the PIAC was consulted, okay. and PIAC also indicated positions. Is that this is what it was happening. Um, and, and, and the issue has both sides. There was a lot of, um, um, a lot of um, youth, uh, particularly, or students who happened to be students with colors who were not comfortable with it. Mm -hmm. um, you may have other views that indicating that just having a police officer around More may give you a safe environment. Safe yeah. However, yeah. Um, the decision that was made was based on looking into the details how a student feels about the present. Mm -hmm. you know, mind you, Men, men and women in blue are part, supposed to be part of our community. They are part of our they community. Yes, and, and they're supposed to preserve and protect. Yeah. And this is how we're going to work on it. Yeah. But it's a perception of the, of, uh, of, uh, and also the previous stories of marginalization yeah. of youth, particularly youth with the color, particularly yeah. black Police youth. Police carding youth, in particular. And the carding. Yeah. Yeah. So there was a lot, of, um, a lot of politics involved within that area. Mm -hmm. Uh, but the decision is already being made. There's yeah. no resource officers in the schools. Yeah. Um, if the public decides 20 years from now or look at the issues and feels that way, um, I, I, I look personally, you know, um, as an, I'm, I'm, I, you know, I have police officers, friends, police officers. Mm -hmm. but when I see them, in there, I feel happy, joy, and handshake them how things are going. It's part of the community. So the policing should change a little bit, to, in a sense, is a part of the community. Yes. Uh, being part Instead of, of being the outside hand, outside hand, and also the young of, boys yeah. to be educated. You know, the police is here to, to protect, protect and yeah. to serve you. Mm -hmm. And you could be a tomorrow a good. Uh, you could be tomorrow you could a, be police a police officer. officer yourself, yeah, yeah, police officers make good money. Yeah. So let's put it this way. <laughs> okay. So a lot of people who are looking for um, and, and and you know the the, the yeah. job is very difficult and job is a challenging, but it's also rewarding. Yes, um, I know quite very few police officers that I appreciate the service yeah. they offer. Uh, but that was the issue that the board dealt with it, and I think that was the result is that no longer exists. Mm -hmm. um, and I do understand where the sensitivity where it comes from, the for particularly yeah. for the black boys. Yeah, amazing, Ali. I want you to tell our viewers are watching us right now. Yeah. Uh, people of Ward 1, yeah. Etobicoke. Etobicoke North. Why yeah. Etobicoke North? Why should they vote for you? Absolutely. And that's an amazing question. It's a great question. Why would you vote for Ali, Muhammad Ali, for October 22nd uh, to be a school trustee for Ward 1, Etobicoke North? So here's a three things. When you look at the trustees, I want you to look at uh, people who are running for the trustees. You have to look at three things. You look at the person's education background, the person's experience, and the person's involvement without holding an office. Um, if you look at the profile of the, um, the, the trustees that are running right now, I could humbly say I'm one of the most well-educated in there. I don't think I have seen degree higher than the degree that I did. Um, I have been um, working with the school system for a long time, so I have a lot of experience. A lot of experience. As a parent, How many I started, years? you could say more than six, seven years. As seven, a parent, yeah. and I, that's a very humble uh, estimation. It no, could be I've longer, seen you involved. Longer, involved. I actually get involved when my child was grade one. Mm. And the teacher needed help and said, can you come and help us? And that's how I got involved. The second thing that I do have the skill set uh, to be, I, I worked with uh, three different trustees. And actually, I'm very happy to say that I gained a lot of experience by working with them as a parent rep, bringing issues forward, taking and, 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 and also analyzing issues, and coming up with the options. And you know, um, Shukri, I've been trained uh, as a profession, as a public, uh, as an, uh, as an um, I graduated with a degree from Rice University with the Public Policy Administration. So policy so administration policy, yeah. is, in my, is in my blood. Yeah, and also, I work in the that field. That is a position of trustee. A lot of people don't know. You have to push policies. You right? have to push policies. policies. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. The job yeah. of the trustees is to oversee all the Toronto District School Board mm -hmm. to put the, to uh, and to uh, to pass the policies, to look at the, the budget, yeah. and 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 to work with it through. So I'm very well rounded when it comes to policies. I can look at the cons and bronze of every subject. I could see or read things that a people, average person, cannot read in terms of legislation where it's going with it. Yeah. Um, the other thing is that at first. 
I'm a resident of Etobicoke North. Um, that's what I know. I lived most of my time in Etobicoke North. I still live in Etobicoke North. My kids were all born in Etobicoke North. Um, I work in the area, yeah. so for me, it's a natural. It's a home. So it's it's you, a home. You know the ins and outs. Uh, you know the school system. I know the school system. You I actually, to be, uh, to, uh, uh, honestly, I graduated from Thistletown Collegiate Institute, which just isn't in an Albion, yes. and as my high school. Yeah. And, and, and my time, I think at this time, I believe I could give back. And, and if you are um, you know, trying to give to anyone to a position, that's what you look for. You look for the knowledge, the skills, abilities, and experience. And I think I have them both on top of that. I'm a parent and resident of Tobacco North, so I think um, it, w it would be good investment for the uh, Tobacco North community to vote for Ali Muhammad Ali on October 22nd, yeah. based on the merit, based on experience, based mm -hmm. on the knowledge, and also, I'm actually, you could say when I have an impact on the students, I feel good about it, and, mm -hmm. and it have been, been I've been fighting with a lot of. Uh, um, um, uh, what do you call the uh, systemic barriers for that uh, yeah. uh, that we have in our school system to um, uh, to make sure that there's no um, barriers for our student to succeed and I'll continue uh, that and that is why I'm running for this office well said well said Ali thank you so much so there you have it our viewers uh, Ali Mohammed Ali for Ward 1 October Etobicoke North um, October 22nd go out there and vote um, and yeah, best, best of luck. And viewers, yeah. thank you very much. And Shukri, it was an honor to be with you on the, on the Hall Market TV yeah. uh, and uh, from here in Etobicoke. Thank you so <laughs> much. Thanks, okay. for, Thanks a lot. And we've been sponsored by Easter Restaurant, Easter Banquet Hall. Thank you so much. And have a wonderful day. Thank you. Hall Market TV.